the most underrated degrees. That's what we're going to be talking about today. But before we do that, go ahead and gently tap the like button in order to defeat the evil YouTube algorithm. On this channel, we talk about college degrees, personal finance, careers, entrepreneurship, trends, and different opportunities that will lead you to success. And we also talk about avoiding the common financial traps that are way too common these days. And if that sounds like something that interests you and you haven't done it already, go ahead, hit the subscribe button, ring the notification bell in order to see more content like this. And with that out of the way, let's jump right into it. My name is Shane Hummus and we are answering the hard hitting question. Hi, it's the news. So number 10 on the list is going to be industrial design. So industrial design is basically where you design products that are intended to be mass produced. And that's right, this one is an art degree. Okay, now a lot of my subscribers are straight savages and they just roast art degrees like crazy in the comments section. And before I started researching these degrees in depth, I thought the same thing. I mean, anybody who looks at the basic numbers would probably think this. But after doing some research on this stuff, I got woke, okay? I got enlightened. There are a few art degrees out there that aren't that bad, and if you don't believe me, go ahead and look at these stats. Industrial design ranks 240 out of 835 possible degrees. You're going to start off at $50,900 a year, and mid-career pay is going to be $91,900. You guys know that I really warned against these degrees, okay? I poked a lot of fun at art majors, and I'd just like to take this moment to apologize. Aww. Absolutely no! Because if I'm being honest, most art degrees are still pretty trash when you think about it from a personal finance perspective. And again, I say this in every video, if you want to be an artist, that's great. I've got a lot of respect for artists, many of my friends are, that's amazing. In most cases, you'd be better off not getting an art degree if you want to be a professional artist. If you want to be a professional artist, you got to get a little bit creative. You'd be much better off just starting a YouTube channel or a blog or something along those lines, maybe creating your own business. But industrial design is a pretty good one because it is an art related degree, but you're able to use your art skills in a practical way. Not only will it teach you to sketch products on just a piece of paper, but you're also going to work with what's known as CAD, which is computer aided design. This will lead you to making products that are beautiful and ergonomic enough to please customers, but are also simple enough that they can be mass produced by a company. Just about every product that you have in your life was once a sketch on an industrial designer's canvas. It came from their imagination and then it was brought into reality, which is pretty cool. Now I kind of want to clarify one thing here. When I say the word underrated, I want to make sure that you know exactly what I mean by this. When I say the word underrated, I mean degrees that are actually either decent or maybe even in some cases they're good, but people might think that they're not good at all. These are degrees where if you have a really good plan going into it and you do all the right things, you can definitely turn it into a good career. Number nine on the list is going to be industrial psychology. That's right, I can see the comments now. People are going to be like, clown, clown, clown. You said psychology is the most overrated degree on your other video, clown. Bomb, you a clown. Okay, so sometimes I'm not as clear as I should be in some of my videos. For instance, I ranked like the most common science degrees one time, and then I also put, you know, the top 10 most common science degrees, one of the ones that was at the very top, I put as one of the worst science degrees. And what I meant by that is it's number 10 out of the common science degrees, like the ones that a lot of people graduate with. And people like roasted me in the comments, but you know what, it's whatever. I'll have to be more clear on that in the future. But most types of psychology honestly don't have very good numbers. It's probably the most popular degree out there. Over 100,000 people graduate with a psychology degree every single year, and there just aren't that many jobs at the bachelor level. However, industrial psychology and also organizational, it's pretty good as well. They're a little bit different. So basically, industrial psychology is studying, analyzing, and figuring out human behavior within the workplace. So mainly how different businesses work and how employees function how things are different in a giant company versus how things are in a small company, things like this. Now, industrial psychology ranks 231 out of 835 possible degrees. Industrial psychology doesn't have numbers that are that bad, to be honest with you. You start off making around $46,000 a year and mid-career pay is gonna be 92,500. And the best thing about this one is that you might actually be able to get a job with just a bachelor's level degree. No promises, you might have to go back and get a master's with this one still, but there's a good chance that you might actually be able to get a job with just a bachelor's. And this degree is basically designed to use psychology in such a way that benefits the company. Things like understanding how to build a good work culture, how to keep your employees motivated, things like that. 
you can see why this would actually be useful in businesses, especially really big ones, and why they would hire people to graduate with this degree. Number eight on the list is one that I don't think is talked about enough. That's why I decided to put it on this list, and that's gonna be cybersecurity. This is basically how you protect your company from you know, different people, outsiders, hackers that are trying to get in and steal people's data, steal your software, steal some of your numbers, all those sorts of things. Now with this one, you're gonna start off making around $61,000 a year, and then mid-career pay is gonna be 93,000. So it ranks pretty well right now, and I think this one is going to rank even better in the future. Just look at the recent scandal where a Tesla employee was offered $1 million by a Russian citizen who was trying to install malware in one of the Tesla gigafactories. You can't even make this stuff up. It doesn't even seem like this guy had anything to gain. He just wanted to sabotage the company. Other attacks, of course, that happened recently were Equifax, for instance, was hacked. Hundreds of millions of people's data was leaked. Now, just a side tangent from my personal life, I know a guy who actually designs what's known as electronic health records, and he specifically kind of specializes in the security part of that. Now, if you work in the medical field, you know that HIPAA is a really big thing. HIPAA is basically just what they do in order to protect people's health information. And he told me that health information, if it's leaked on the black market, apparently it's worth something like five to 10 times as much as people's financial information. Now, I don't know if that's actually true. Maybe that's just something that he tells everyone because he owns a business in that field and he wants people to buy his products. But yeah, apparently they're able to sell your health information and then they market specific products to people that would be much more likely to buy them because of the conditions that they have. Pretty awful stuff. The point here is cybersecurity is big now and I think it's going to be even bigger in the future. Now one thing I will mention about this degree and this is common with some of the technology related degrees is you want to make sure that you go to a good college. If you get a cybersecurity related degree from some scammy clown school it's probably not going to be worth anything. Number seven on the list is going to be supply chain management. And this one is basically where you just streamline the whole supply chain. You make sure that the process from the creation of the product all the way until it gets to the person who is buying the product, the customer, is as smooth and as profitable as possible. Now with this one, you're gonna start off making around $58,000 a year and mid-career pay is gonna be 94,000. So this is a business degree and generally speaking, business degrees are pretty good. I've done a ton of research on them. I think that supply chain management is one of the better ones. I didn't expect it to be as good as it was. And then on top of that, one of the weaknesses of business related degrees is that some of them are a little bit too general. Supply chain management does not have that problem. It's very obvious what you're gonna be doing. Amazon became maybe the number one company in the entire world by mastering supply chain management. I see a lot of other companies following in their footsteps. This is gonna become more and more important in the future, even as automation happens, even as outsourcing and streamlining of processes happens. I think this is one of those degrees that will lead to a career and a job that's gonna be relatively future-proof. Number six on the list is going to be international business. So this degree, at least from an American perspective, is all about an American company doing business internationally. You're gonna start off making around $50,000 a year and mid-career pay is 96,000. Another business degree that's really good and it was even better than I expected. Now, a lot of people are interested in majoring in international degrees because they wanna travel and they wanna understand different cultures and all that good stuff. If you're someone who really wants to travel a lot, this is a degree I would think about looking into. Business is becoming more and more international and there's a lot of opportunity there. Uh, businesses here in the US are discovering ways to save money by creating like foreign companies and then you know running some of their money through that company. It's all really interesting stuff that I've been looking into. There's a channel I've been following called Nomad Capitalist, and basically the whole channel is about different ways of saving money by creating businesses in different countries. Really interesting stuff. I don't wanna to get too far off topic, but yeah, this is a pretty good one. Number five on the list is going to be mathematics. Everybody's favorite subject, yay! yay. Now with this degree, you're gonna make $57,000 starting out and mid-career pay is around 102,000 a year. So this is a degree where I knew it was pretty good, but I didn't realize how good it really is. People love hiring math majors in all different industries, all different careers, all different businesses, Businesses. The one weakness of this degree is that it is a little bit general and it's also a little bit abstract in terms of using your math related skills in the real world. It can sometimes be difficult to land your first job just because of the fact that companies aren't really going to see how you can help them because you don't have that much real world experience. However, once you get some work experience, this one is going to be amazing. And this is shown by the salary almost doubling from the entry level pay to the mid career pay. Number four on the list is going to be management information systems. And basically, this is all about computerized information processing that is designed to support a business. So it basically combines technology-related skills and business-related skills in a way that a lot of companies really like and they want to hire people with this degree. It's another business-related degree, another one where I knew it was good, but I didn't realize how good it was. Lots of opportunity in business.
business, lots of opportunity in the technology industry. Also a really good degree if you think that maybe later on you want to go off on your own, start your own business and become an entrepreneur. A lot of people will spend a few years working in the industry, getting a job, working their way up, learning different skills, learning the business and the technology side of things, and then they'll end up leaving and starting their own business after they've identified a good opportunity. Number three on the list is going to be economics. Now economics is technically like a liberal arts type of degree, it's like a social science. So don't think that I never include liberal arts degrees on my list, okay? Some of them are pretty good. And economics is generally about the production and distribution of wealth. It's gonna be focused on production and then the buying and selling of goods and services. You're gonna start off making around $56,000 a year and then mid-career pay is gonna be 107,000. Now I really enjoy economics myself. Uh, it makes a lot of sense and it kind of just helps you understand how the world works in general. I really think that if you study economics, you'll have a better understanding of how the world works, which will lead you to making just better life decisions, understanding how value is created, understanding that money doesn't just grow on trees, seeing how different industries work together. This was actually one of the top degrees when I was doing my research on the degrees that lead to people becoming millionaires. I think it was either number three or number two on the list. And I think it's pretty obvious, even though it isn't technically a business degree, um, in some cases you will actually be competing with different business degrees for careers. And then on top of that, you're gonna learn a lot of stuff that can be related back to business. So many people who graduate with an economics degree will eventually end up starting their own businesses. Now this is one where you might have a little bit of trouble getting your first job right out of college, but once you get the foot in the door, you know, you get your first job out of college, you get some experience under your belt, you're gonna be good to go. It's another really flexible degree, similar to the business degrees where you can pretty much work in any industry for any company. So economics did surprise me how good it is overall, and I think it's just a pretty solid choice. Number two on the list is going to be statistics. Statistics basically studies the different methodologies used to draw conclusions from data. This is going to include gathering, analyzing, and reviewing data before you draw conclusions. Now this one starts off making $62,000 a year and mid-career pay is $113,000. Now statistics is similar to math, but in my opinion, it's kind of math that's a little bit more practical. It's designed to draw conclusions from data that's gathered in real life and be applied to real life situations. Whereas pure mathematics can be a little bit more abstract and you don't necessarily have the ability to apply it to real world situations. But yeah, statistics doesn't really have that issue as much. Um, very similar to math in other ways though. It's a really good one, uh, highly respected just like math. Even if you don't end up becoming like a mathematician or a statistician, can't blah, 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 statistician, can't even pronounce that word. Even if you don't end up becoming a statistician, you can still get a job doing any number of different things just because of the fact that this degree is highly respected overall. And then on top of that, math related skills in general are just kind of coveted a lot. Number one on the list is going to be physics. Now, I knew that physics was going to be a good one just because of the fact that, you know, really smart people tend to study physics. And physics is the science that tries to understand the laws of nature and the relationship between matter and energy, for instance. You're going to start off making around $60,000 a year and mid-career pay is going to be $113,000. Now, from what I've heard, this might actually be the hardest degree you can possibly get out there. It does have a little bit of competition from some of the engineering related degrees and some other random ones, but a lot of people tell me that physics is actually the hardest subject. Now, a big issue with this one is you usually can't become a physicist with just a bachelor's level degree. You've got to get at least a master's or a doctorate, but this is another one of those degrees similar to math and statistics where companies will just figure out a way to hire you because they know what they're getting when they hire someone who has a physics degree. They're getting someone who's very smart, very hardworking, and very motivated. It's similar to a math degree, but I think it's a little bit more practical just because it studies more real world concepts. So for instance, you might get a physics degree and end up working as a software developer. Your specialized training in math or physics is gonna be a little bit different than someone who gets a computer science degree. And so you're gonna be able to bring a different perspective into a company. One thing about this is it might be a little bit difficult for you to get your first job. You really gotta plan ahead, even with a degree like this, make sure that you plan ahead, get your foot in the door, get your first job, get that two years of experience that everyone requires, and then you will be set. As always, make sure to smash the like button, hit the subscribe button, ring the notification bell, comment down below any thoughts, comments, criticisms, etc. And before you go, make sure to check out my other videos right here. I made them just for you.